Hi everyone, this is Constantine, and welcome to another installment of my Japanese film series. Today I、uh, am going to be talking about Nakata Hideo's 1998 film The Ring, probably one of the biggest classics in all of Japanese horror.、Uh, but first, I really wanted to thank all of the new subscribers. It means a lot to me that you're willing to listen to me babble on about、uh, random things. But I also want to thank、uh, Tokyo Swan. For linking one of my videos in his most recent review of Tokyo Gore Police. I really respect Tokyo Swan and his reviews. I watch them, I enjoy them. And I think that his knowledge of Japanese film, and you know, particularly Japanese horror, but probably all Japanese film, is really quite impressive. And his opinion really means a lot to me, and I really value it. So it's a big deal for me, personally. That he thinks my channel is worth watching. So thank you very much, Tokyo Swan. I love you. I mean, what? No. <laughs> anyway, in any case,、um, The Ring was a big deal.、Uh, it is、uh, released in America under the title Ringu, even though that sounds kind of goofy,、uh, just to differentiate it from the American remake. And The Japanese version was just such a huge hit. Not only did it really kind of revolutionize Japanese horror, but it also really revitalized the Japanese film industry in general. If you're a fan of the movie, then you probably already know that it is based off a novel, also called The Ring, by the author Suzuki Koji. And this novel has been translated into English, so you can probably go and find it at a Borders or something if you want to read it. And Suzuki Koji has been called the、uh, Japanese Stephen King. Uh, he has written a lot of really important Japanese horror stories that have subsequently been made into important J horror films. You know, The Ring, the sequel to The Ring called Spiral or Rasen. And he also wrote Dark Water, which was most recently remade、uh, with Jennifer Connelly in it, even though I don't really think the American remake is very、uh, good. In any case, everyone probably knows the basic plotline of The Ring, which is that there is a haunted videotape that, upon watching it, will kill you in seven days. And there is also a very creepy Japanese ghost,、uh, a girl who is in a well. However, there are some differences between the film and the novel.、Uh, the biggest difference is that in the film, the character Asakawa is a single mother, whereas in the book, Asakawa is a man who is struggling to protect his wife and child from the curse in the videotape. Personally, I prefer the version in the film because not only do I believe that Nakata Hideo really、uh, expertly expressed all the themes that were important to Suzuki Koji when he was writing the novel, he also really reinforced them and perhaps expressed them better by switching the character Asakawa from a man to a woman.、Um, Suzuki Koji has、uh, been quoted in an interview saying that.、Uh, He consciously made the main character Asakawa into a man because、uh, he wanted to really highlight what he calls the gendering of Japanese society.、Um, and he really feels that within Japanese society, the responsibility of raising children is placed solely upon the shoulders of women, and that fathers play a very distant and uninvolved role.、Um, according to Suzuki, I'll read a quote、uh, My position is that there is no pre existing paternal instinct. Under the traditional patriarchal system, fathers never assumed any true responsibility for their families. They were basically just symbolic figures. So, what I'm trying to stress、uh, is the notion that fatherhood is a concept. This idea of paternal instinct is something novel. Throughout Japanese literature, the men are forever telling their wives to take care of everything while they stumble out into the outside world, blindly accepting what they see as the natural family order. Japanese society is an overwhelmingly maternal society where men are indulged. And so, what Suzuki Koji wanted to do with the story The Ring was he wanted to show a very positive image of a Japanese man who was taking an active role not only in the life of his child, but also in trying to、uh, protect his wife and child from a threat. I really believe that what Suzuki Koji is talking about in this quote、uh, follows very, very closely to the Concept of Ryosai Kenbo, which means good wife, wise mother. This was an ideal created by the Meiji government in the early 20th century, and the whole idea was that it was empowering women by giving them a way to positively influence the development of Japanese society and Japan as a country by placing the responsibility of raising their children into productive and virtuous Japanese citizens. So, you know. 
giving Japanese women the responsibility of raising good children into productive citizens was a way to empower them. Ironically enough, however, by empowering women to be good wives and wise mothers, uh, the Meiji government also disenfranchised women of many of the rights that they had enjoyed uh, in previous Japanese eras, like the Tokugawa era, the right to inherit property, the right to uh, have a lot of responsibility outside of the household, own businesses, go outside at all. I mean, that last thing was a bit of an exaggeration, but at the same time, the idea behind the whole Ryosai Kembo quote or concept was to prevent women from being able to actively participate and influence politics. And so it definitely was a, a way of confining women to the household. And I think that this idea of the main responsibility of women being to give birth to and raise children has continued into modern Japanese society and perhaps is a reason why the society is experiencing a lot of problems, a declining birth rate, women who are refusing to give married, get married because they don't want to give up their lifestyles. And whether consciously or subconsciously, I think most Japanese people are aware of this idea of Ryosai Kembo. Um, you just have to turn to Japanese literature to see this, because in Japanese literature, if an author wants to allude to a problem within Japanese society, he can very easily do this just by depicting a woman who has failed in her role as a mother. You see this in Japanese film as well. Um, so whether explicitly or implicitly, the problems uh, within Japanese society that are expressed in the novel or the film can always be traced back to this failure of a woman to be a good mother. For example, Murakami Yu's 1980 novel, Coin Locker Babies, portrays the decay and corruption of modern Tokyo. Unsurprisingly, of course, the two main characters were abandoned by their mothers and coin lockers as babies. I don't understand, like, that's basically the epitome of failing as a mother, abandoning your infant child in a coin locker. However, in both versions of the story, it's quite obvious that one of the primary themes is women who have in some way defied their traditional gender roles and the repercussions of this defiance. Um, it's a really common theme throughout the entire J-horror uh, genre, and I really think it's a very powerful piece of social commentary. I'm not a strong believer that all film has to have social commentary in it, or that films in general can be effective means of social commentary, though in some cases they can be. However, in the case of j Hor, I think that the theme of disrupted family structures and women defying tradition is so prevalent that it really deserves consideration. But finally, in 2000, they released Ring O Birthday, or Dingu O Basu Day. <laughs> And uh, this is actually a prequel to the Ring series, and it talks a lot about Sadako before her death and before she became the scary ghost, and it's very good. It is the only version of the story where you really see Sadako portrayed in a very human and a very sympathetic light, and it's very hard not to feel bad for her after watching this film, and it's very, very good, and directing is also very good. So overall, if I only had to recommend two Ring movies to watch, I would say watch the original 1998 Ring and watch Lingo O Birthday because those two are the best in my opinion. So that's going to end my little spiel about the Ring today. Thank you very much for subscribing and commenting and next I'll be talking about The Grudge by Shimizu Takashi which I prefer to the Ring for various reasons which I'll talk about next time. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs> uh, P.S. If you want to read a more critical review of The Ring, you can find that in my blog. There's a link on the sidebar. And also another fun fact, I've been placed on Izu Oshima officially for Jet, so I'll be there next year. And that is actually where they filmed part of The Ring movie. So the well that the creepy ghost girl crawls out of, that's on that island. Oh yeah. <laughs>